Hello and welcome back to the Monsters of Monster Hunter Double Cross, where today we are playing with Elatrion, and I'm sure it's going to go just swimmingly with me being weak to literally every element. But hey, it'll be exciting if nothing else. And I'm going to do what I can here with a gourmet voucher and then gonna get me some electric res because I don't resist electricity very well right now. And we are, of course, getting our hands on Insurer. So yeah, here's how we're going into this quest. 914 defense, minus 17 thunder res, slightly less bad resistances everywhere else. Should be exciting. Let's do it. Also, I've got plenty of items to make use of against this guy. And we're going in with a weapon that has no element, so we don't have to care about Dragon Blight. And we also don't have to care about which phase he's in when we're hitting him, so... Yeah. Use that cool drink. We're gonna use this demon drug. So we can grab that, and then we'll also grab these, and these, and these, and I guess we could use these to get rid of Thunder Blade or Ice Blade at some point. Hopefully we won't need to. Hey, buddy. Fun fact, Alatrion and Teostra have the same roar. Less fun fact, ow. I don't know why I'm looking for paintballs. I don't have them, and there's also no need to use them. Alatrion doesn't go anywhere. Latreon's actually an interesting monster. He has been in several games since he showed up, and he has gotten changes in every game except for this one since he showed up. Like, he first showed up in Monster Hunter Try as the game's absolute end boss monster, the last monster you fight. And they made him hard. Groups failed at him very frequently. And yeah, he was just a bad time for just about everyone involved. And then Portable 3rd happened and he was way easier. I think he had lower health in Portable 3rd. And also, you were able to knock him down by flinching his legs. So just two flinches on a leg on either side would knock him down. And the back leg and the front leg both counted for the same. So it was super easy to knock him down. Between that and his reduced health, Alatrion was super easy in Portable 3rd. And then came 3U, where they decided, hey, you know what? Let's make it impossible to knock him down by hitting his legs. Except for maybe when you break his claws. And so he was more difficult again, but still not quite up to the level that he was in Try. At least not in my opinion. And then in Cross, he came back here and... Well, he was rideable, so that was nice. But since we're on Ingle Isle instead of wherever it was that he was before, the Sacred Land or something, uh, there's no longer any walls to get his horns stuck in when he charges, and there's no longer a Ballista Binder to use on him. So they took away some of our ability to use the environment against him and, in its place, let us ride him. 
Also, they made his horns way easier to break this time around. It used to take a lot more effort to actually break them. And now he's in air phase, which means that his resistances have changed, as have the elements he can use against us. He'll usually spend most of the fight in air phase, and just because I call it air phase doesn't mean he has to be in the air, as you can see now. Basically, when he's blue, he's in what I call air phase, and when he's red, he's in what I call ground phase. Air phase, he can use ice and lightning, and is weak to fire and dragon. Ground phase, he can use fire and dragon, and is weak to ice and lightning. And water works okay against him at all times, because it's the one element he can't use, I guess. And when he's done being angry and starts flying, then we can start flashing. Because you can't knock him out of the sky with a flash when he's angry. And he's done being angry. Incidentally, whenever he's done using a lightning attack, he'll put his face right down where you can reach it. I used to love hammering him, so that was very useful to know. Also, he was the only monster in Try with Dragon Wind. Also, since he's not angry. And we've already got both horns. Well, it really sucks when he roars and one of those just decides to spawn under you. I can't think of any other monster that's received a change in every non-expansion game it's been put in. And you could argue that 3U was an expansion game, and it kind of was. But it was a lot meatier than any other one because it also added most of the content from Portable 3rd as well. Now that we've gotten the horns broken, we don't have to go for his face. Though it... Dang it, I was hoping I could, like, get here or something. The face is still a, an enticing hit zone. It's weak. Good job, cats. Also, incidentally, Alatrion's kind of silly when you're actually carving him. Because they decided, oh, since he's the ultimate strongest monster in all of Monster Hunter Tri, we should make all of his parts sound super cool. So, instead of scales, he has plates. Instead of shells, he's got other stuff. Like, just, he's got the rare version of everything as his default. And his actual rare items are dragon gems and dragon sapphires. Yeah, every time he uses lightning, his face goes where you can hit it. And I mean that like actually summoning in lightning bolts, not like the lightning glide or this. Well, actually, when he does more than one slap, he will put his face where you can hit it. And you can avoid the slaps by just walking. You'll note I'm not holding R or anything. And there's the face. Yeah, most of his attacks, if you're using a hammer, you can actually dodge without needing to dodge. Like, you can have your weapon unsheathed and just walk, and that's enough to dodge most of his attacks. Which is part of why Hammer was so good against him before. There's also the fact that the Grongigas Hammer in 3U was OP as all hell. And hey, we got his tail. 
So, we have two breaks left that we're likely to get. And that's the left and right leg. His wings are also breakable, but it is exceedingly unlikely that we'll get those. You basically need to bring a gunner to get the wing breaks. Like, even though it is possible to hit the wings with non-gunner weapons, they are quite durable. And in the olden days, they bounced purple, I'm pretty sure. That might not be the case anymore. We'll find out when he's down after this ride. Assuming we do get him down and don't run out of stamina. All right. You can have one more struggle, but that's it, buddy. It's a shame the ride doesn't actually apply damage to the wings. That would make it easier to break them. Okay, looks like purple doesn't bounce on the wings anymore. So that's good. We're not doing as much damage as we could be by going for the wings, but... I mean, we might as well. I guess that's another thing they did to make up for the fact that there's no binder, I guess. Make the wings easier to hurt. Incidentally, just like Teo, when he does his charge attack, it's either all curve or no curve. He doesn't do anything in half measures. I really miss being able to get his horns stuck in stuff, though. Because, like, treat him like a Diablos. Get him stuck on those platforms. It was kind of cool. And I have effectively 15 more flash bombs, so if he leaves rage while flying, he's getting flashed. Ow. Oh, I guess he can do more than... Ow. Kind of forgot that he could snowman you. That's problematic. It's a shame just being here doesn't keep snowman from happening. Because, like, I need to use a cool drink to not take damage, but I can be snowmanned. Here, buddy, have some of that. Of note, he is immune to flashes during attacks, or at least during certain animations, so... Unless he's idling, it's not always a good idea to toss a flash, but... Sometimes you can get him right before his attack animation starts and do just fine. I wonder if breaking his legs while he's on the ground still knocks him over. Oh, I don't want to be near him for that. Oh, thank goodness I enraged him. Because he was going to jump into the air and land and just do damage in so doing. And since I was all over him, it would have been a little unpleasant for my health. Let's go ahead and use a dash juice really quick here. Also, his fire breath is really cool. Like, it's really intimidating. And I like to not get hit by it. I like to not get hit by a lot of his attacks, really. Yeah, also, uh, do pay attention when he goes blue. Also when he's red. I think he just stops glowing any color entirely when he dies. I don't recall. It's been a while since I've fought in a latch round. In fact, the last time I fought a latch round was actually visible on this very channel in my uh, 3DS playthrough of Double Cross where I failed against this very quest. Ooh, someone jumped up in the air before enraging. Have some flash, buddy. Went for a quick burst there in hopes that I would at least get the hit. I think I might have now.
Uh-oh. Well, so much for that second mega put or first aid med plus, rather. Where are you going, buddy? I need you to be out of the lava. I do enjoy Latron. He's a really fun fight. Easily my favorite Elder Dragon on this skeleton. Considering he does share his skeleton with Cushy and Teo. And he also shares a few moves with each of them, which is kind of neat. And as we said, he shares his roar with Teo. Yeah, like he's got Teo's tail whip. Uh, Cushy's. I'm dead. That's not Cushy's. That's just I. I'm dead. Uh, he's got Cushy's like glide, though with electricity on it. He's got Cushy's ice breath. The one where he just sweeps his face back and forth with the beam of ice that causes snowman. Yeah, he's he's got a handful of things stolen from either of those two monsters. But he's also got several things that are all his own, which is neat. And I enjoy it. And let's go ahead and use this. And we'll use this. And then we'll use this. And then we'll hop on back down. Oh, there he is. You want to maybe get out of the lava? I mean, I guess that's one way to get out. I was expecting you to get out going the other direction, but... Oh, wait, what? That was behind him. Does he look behind him when he taunts? Oh, please don't come for me. Okay, good. Let's try and get these arms. Thanks, cat. Oh, that's a ride, which is really unfortunate because my sharpness is terrible right now. If I go for the wings, I'm almost certain to bounce. But if I'm in sword mode, I won't bounce. I'll just be doing low damage. But we're by the face, so I'll just go for the face. It's easier damage. Or at least more damage. Much better. I really should have sharpened while I was back at the base camp. That would have been smart. But I don't always do smart things. Okay, we do still get knockdowns for breaking the legs. Just not for anything shy of a break. No amount of leg flinches will knock him down. Another fun part about hammering Alatrion is if you manage to KO him while he's flying, he falls down, stands up, then realizes he's KO'd and falls down again. It's very silly. I kind of wish I was hammering him, but my switch axe is way better than any hammer I have. And I'm better at switch axe than hammer, though. I mean, killed hammer against the Latrion is something I'm quite used to. Let's not get slapped. Those slaps are probably the most damaging attack he has against me with my low thunder res. Uh-oh. Yep. That's some damage right there. 
I think they one-shot me. Like, I didn't have quite full HP there, but I think if I did, I would still have ended up dead. I really shouldn't have been carving. Well, this time I'm going to take my own advice and sharpen while I'm in here, even though I just sharpened. And then... Use that. Then that. We are, of course, starting off with the things that do not have time limits. And then moving to the things with time limits, starting with the longer limit and going to the shorter limit. And then jumping down and not getting hit by those slaps anymore because, yeah, I'm pretty sure they're lethal regardless of my health if he's raging. So it looks like we've broken his right, or uh, his left, our right, when we're facing each other. Yeah, his left leg is broken. Nice taunt, buddy. Do it some more. I want to break your other leg. Well, he's not raging. Which means... Flash time! Give me a wing break. I just want to get the sub. I shouldn't have gone for that burst. That was just a waste of energy. Seriously, with all the jumping up we're doing, we might get a wing break, but they are, like, the most durable wings in the game. So we really can't expect much, even though I'm, like, specifically gunning for them. Well, not gunning. I'm going for them. Gunning is not a thing I do. Also, ow. Thanks for the emergency top off. That, well, not top off, but emergency health. Probably should go for a top off, though. Well, he's not in air mode, so I don't have any lightning to worry about. Lightning is the more dangerous thing. I can take some dragon. Ow. Dragon and fire both are significantly less lethal to me than lightning. Because, uh, just a reminder, minus 20 lightning res, minus 4 dragon, and minus 6 fire. Minus 20 is the lowest number there, by a pretty significant margin, for those of you who can't math. Where that leg's gotta break soonish. Air mode, okay. Um, should probably go for a top off then. Because I do not want to be slapped to death. Ah, oh, but now he's on the ground. He can't slap anyone to death from the ground. Well, I mean, I guess he can. He does have his slap attack, but. It's not a thunder slap. And it's not a flying thunder slap, which is the most dangerous slap of them all. That was a wing flinch. And that's him leaving air mode, so we are safe once again. Well, safe-ish. Comparatively safe relatively safe. It may just be illusions of safety, though. Really depends what he does and what I do in response. Okay, bye. See? All turn. And now he's mad again. Let's get him back over here. There's a lot more open space, or at least the open space is wider. Though we don't want him next to that thing because that thing gets me killed. Though maybe he'll kill it. That would be cool. Now we, we like being over here in this nice little 
arena. There goes the other leg. And hey, the wings fell right on top of us. How convenient. Yay, we broke one. And you only have to break one. Pretty sure you used to have to break two. But I could be wrong there. But now we can go for the face all the time, forever. Like right now. Kind of interesting he hasn't done his snowstorm move yet. But then again, he doesn't do the snowstorm too often in Gen 4. Because he doesn't actually, like, leave to do it. Because it used to be he'd, like, go fly up high on top of one of the ridges surrounding the crater that you fought him in. And then call down a uh, hailstorm. And basically you just have to avoid the hail while it falls while being completely unable to attack him because he was way too high up for any of that. But in this game, he does it from the, the altitude that he normally flies at. Maybe a little higher. Uh-oh. Eh. Eh. So I guess maybe he just doesn't like letting you tickle his toes while he's doing it, and that's why he doesn't do it so often? Could be. Get some real nice face hits. That'd be nice. Ow. Let's help our healer cat come back. Hey, buddy. Thanks for the buff. So, since we got that wing break, we now do have all of the breaks that we're likely to get or all the breaks that we're going to get, unless we just happen to get the other wing break, because I'm not going to be going for it. Is there an other wing break? Do they both break together? No, they don't. That, that left wing is clearly more broken than the right wing. So yeah, the right wing will only be broken potentially by incidental jumping damage. Because his face just takes that much more damage. It's not worth going for the wings. Eh, why has he got to be enraged? I find it interesting. It used to be that to tell that he was enraged, you just had to look for ice or fire coming out of his mouth. But nowadays he's got like this particle aura that says, Hey, look at me, I'm enraged. So it looks like he might have just left Rage, which is a shame, because I do more damage to him when he's raging. He's cheating me out of damage by being calm right now. Also, my sharpness wasn't amazing, so that didn't help either. So yeah, he's got this particle aura saying, hey, look at me, I'm in Rage, or er, yeah, I'm in Rage. Also, I like how his eyes flash red when he changes to ground phase. That's kind of cool. I need him to not go for me for a little while. Go for the cats. Uh, you're, you're not pointing at the cats. Ow. Thanks, cat. Well, that didn't stay raised long. Of course, it rarely does. I don't expect I'll end up getting another ride. I definitely won't get two more. But I think, like... Oh, hey, there's the tail sweep. 
If he still had his tail, I think it would... Well, no, it looked like it did come with explosions on the ground anyway, but so did that. Ow! Wasn't able to get clear. Well, no more deaths allowed. That's not an enviable position to be in. But I think we can still manage as long as I don't, like, do anything stupid or get one shot. Shouldn't have used that first. I should have brought four demon drugs. That would have been smart. Oh, well. We'll use what we've got and hope that it's enough. Rar to you, too. Air phase, huh? And he's raging, which is unfortunate. Because I want to use more flashes. Because now flashes are free face hits. And that's exactly the part I want to hit. Uh-oh. Yeah, go for the cats. That's good. Still raging, though. It's a shame that flinching the legs when he's flying only does that tiny little flinch. Whoop. Flinching him, flinching his legs when he's standing at least keeps him immobile for slightly longer, which is helpful. But alas, flying leg flinches just have to be bad. Ow. Aw, why'd you have to hit my cat? That cat's only got good health horns. Taking bets on how long that's going to stay up. I'm a little surprised I didn't take damage there. Eh, almost jumped into it. That would have been bad for my health, probably. Hey, look, it's back down. Wait, did, where'd it go? Ooh, going into air phase when not raging. Don't mind if I do. Oh, that was too early. No, it wasn't. Well, it was too early, because otherwise it would have fallen. Yeah, it was too early, just not a miss. Which is a shame, because I would have liked to actually get the knockdown. I'm sorry. Of course you take flight after I enrage you, you jerk. Ow. 
I guess it's still possible that we could see Alatrion do the whole fall down, stand up, then realize status happened thing. Even though we don't have a status weapon. Did... Oh, you're, you're done. Oh, I guess it does fly up to do this. Okay, we need to stay on the move or else these will get us. But we also need to watch in front of us so that we don't run into one. They choose one person to follow, and then the rest of it is just kind of randomly placed. Also, the person that it followed is who he'll land in front of every time, just for the record. Back in Try era 3U, it would choose someone to follow and there would be very few landing randomly. So, for the most part, if it wasn't following you, you could just hold still and be completely safe from that attack. Which was kind of silly. I was saying something before that started. All oh, right, uh, status. We don't have a status weapon, but if we kill him while he's flying, then he'll fall down, stand up, realize he's dead, and fall down again. Which is very silly. And I would love to see it happen. Ow. Especially because if we see it happen, it means that he's dead. Which is kind of what I'm going for right now. Him being dead and not us being dead. Alright, let's hope our healer cat. I do have the stuff to make 10 more life powders. So I probably should. I mean, yeah, if we fail this quest, it's not going to be from running out of healing. It'll be from not being able to use the healing we brought. But he's dead now, so it's all good. He's a pretty cool looking monster. And it looks like he does still have some redness to him. That's interesting. It, it's like a reflective red, so gotta have your camera in the right position to see it. That's kind of cool. Hey, we got a dragon gem. Yeah, texture-wise, his face isn't that great, but like the shininess really hides a lot of the stretching and whatnot. And it looks really cool. Like, look at that. That's cool. But then over here, it's kind of dull. That is... That's a really cool effect. Like, yeah, it's not the highest res textures, but it's enough to sell it. And the effects on it do a good enough job of hiding the imperfections. And he ends up just being a cool-looking monster. Now, did I get some sky piercers? Yeah, like, in G-Rank, if you carve an Alatrion, you get, like, nothing but mantles and palliums. And hey, it's a sky piercer, and we also carved one. But it's not a G-Rank one, so sad face. Yeah, hey, look, we got a pallium for the subquest, but it's not as good a pallium as other palliums. Also, wow, nothing but Time Worn Charms? That's a little disappointing. And uh, that is it for this episode. Join us next time when we fight Amatsu. See you then, friends.